I'm Chris Merrill. He is Joe Huizinga. We hypothesized yesterday, Joe, you recall, we were talking about the, the kids and the parents that are associated with the Gilbert goons. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about uh, lawsuits that might come out. Not just the, the criminal charges, but civil lawsuits that might follow over their involvement with the gang. And a lot of this, I, I think what we witnessed in Michigan sparked our thoughts about criminal or even civil liability when it comes to family members and things like that. Lo and behold, we get off the air. I get a breaking news alert from AZ Central, and I sent that to you. Yep. Right? You did. <laughs> and I said, Joe, this is what we were just talking about. And Joe says, oh, my gosh, it's kismet. Yeah, we, we got to reach out to Robert Anglin and Elena Santa Cruz over at The Republic because, you know, they've been on KTAR a number of times talking about this. They've, you know, been all over this the last several months, and now they are here with us today. Nice to see both of you. Thanks for having me. Listen, super excited that you're here because nobody knows the story better than you. You wrote the story. Literally writing the story on this as we go and doing a fine job. In fact, numerous conversations that we've had off the air about the, the job that you, you two specifically are doing and, and what a great job it is. So you had the story come out yesterday that talked about the, the civil lawsuits. We've got a, a lawyer in Scottsdale that's representing, I assume, some of the family members of the victims. Is that correct? Can you explain sort of who he's representing or at least generally speaking i don't need specific names of victims and things like that but then who is being sued and for what and what are the standings help me understand this a little bit i can take the first half Go um ahead. so the individual that the lawyer is representing is uh, rick keener he's been on here mm-hmm. talked very long about his you know story his son was attacked in august at a the gilbert in and out um the story is that his son had just started um his third year in high school um, over in Chandler and he started getting threats from people he didn't really know Um, so they reported to officials and nothing really happened and then these kids showed up to his house again trying to threaten them and then next thing you know over a week later he goes to In-N-Out grab a burger with his friends right when he gets there a bunch of kids just come out of a truck and they start attacking they him. They jump him. Yeah, and we have, you know, the video is just, you know, awful to see. They go run after him. You see him run away, trying to get away from them, and then he's just on the ground, and they're all pummeling him. Mm-hmm. And video. You, you may mention the video, which is one of the, the more peculiar twists to this entire tale, is that there are so many videos. Uh, I mean, is this for clout online, that there are videos? Do we know the motivation behind the idea with the videos? I guess nobody exists anymore without filming it, and that includes yeah. criminals. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. Okay, so who's being sued then? We know that we've got the headline was 17 Gilbert goons and parents sued over gang attacks. Okay, who are the parents? Who are the, again, I don't need names. I don't care. But how many are parents? How many are goons? And then there are a lot of different characters that are in the story about who are being eyeballed or named in some way, shape, or form in this story. So there are, we have to... You gotta break it down. So there, there's um, 13 minor, what we would call goons, that have been identified in that lawsuit. Minor kids who have taken part in beatings and assaults. Their parents, a set of 26 of them, have now been sued. So the parents of these goons. Then there, then there are adult goons, and there are four of them, and they are also being sued. And then there are three, what you would call affiliated people, people who took place in the attack on Cooner mm-hmm. who aren't necessarily part of the group, but I don't know, felt like giving a beat down that day. Okay. So your guys' story goes into a lot of detail here. We're talking with uh, Robert Anglin and Elena Santa Cruz from the Arizona uh, Arizona Republic AZ Central. When you say being sued, th- this is a civil suit. What What is being sought here? What What are these you know, alleged goons and their parents being sued for. Well, that gets into the, the the goons themselves are going to be sued for unspecified damages. The parents under Arizona law are held liable for 10,000, the first 10,000 of any actual damages, and then whatever punitive damages they can get. They're being sued because their kids wailed on other kids, and there are a lot of them. The interesting thing about the lawsuit is that it, 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 
the lawyer represents one family. There's another suit coming, but he is naming the world of the the kids involved, claiming that they're part of a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. So you have people named in this lawsuit that weren't necessarily involved in Mr. Cooner's attack or the attack on Mr. Cooner's son, but in fact were involved in other attacks. And you can watch them in the privacy of your home on the videos that they produced. When when you throw that word out there, conspiracy, that set off all kinds of alarm bells for me. And and the the attorney Richard Lyons in this case is is throwing out all kinds of accusations, basically saying if you drove somebody there, if you held somebody there, like do you guys have any sense for hey, what's that line? I mean, if you form a circle around a victim, are you holding somebody there or are are you just there? Like where where does this stop? Well, I think that's a good question, but I th and I think he's got an answer for us. Mm -hmm. If you watch the videos, you can see that there is actual participation. Okay. In one video, the one that comes to mind immediately is what we call the wagon wheel video. That's an attack that actually happened two days at, or two two and a half weeks after Preston Lord was murdered. There was another Gilbert Goon attack, um, and they um, they surrounded the kid and and several of them used or or. Some of them used flashlights to, sh to shine on the kid, followed him, got in front of him, chased him. And, and I think that's the line that Mr. Lyons would say is he's drawing. And, of course, um, it's his lawsuit. I just reported on it. But that's, and then there are people who jump in and, and throw blows. Um, there are people who then, like he said, if you drove them away from him or have tried to participate in helping them get away with it, you're a, you're a, but you do mention the, the 26 parents of those 13 minors here yeah. too. They weren't there, but they're being they're being you know sued as well. The claim against the parents is negligence. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Robert England and uh, uh, Elena Santa Cruz from AZ Central joining us. They wrote the story on the Gilbert Goons. Um, as you're as you're talking, and you mentioned Arizona law. And again, I'm asking you to respond as, to the best of your knowledge. It's kind of a legal question, so if you want to defer to a lawyer, I'll let you. Uh, and that is. You've got uh, parents of kids, negligence, as you just pointed out, Robert, uh, and yet you have some adults, four of them named in the lawsuit. And when we talk about adults, age ranges are like 18 and 19, right? There's, yes. Is there anybody over the age of 19, or is it all in that? There's one that's 20. Okay. But the, the thing also in the lawsuit is that what time or what the age you were, what age you were at the time of the attack. Mm -hmm. Which is huge, yes. especially if you've got kids that were 17 when they were attacked, now they turn 18. If I'm a parent, my kid is 17. I could be held negligent, right? Uh, civilly, anyway, that we're talking about. Yeah. But if my kid has a birthday and then goes to celebrate their birthday by beating somebody up because I'm a bad parent and I taught them that that somehow was okay, uh, now I would not be eligible for that lawsuit. Is that the way you understand it? Yes, from, you know, what we... What a strange legal definition, right? I mean, what a weird line in the sand that we well, just decide. I mean, I guess there has to be one, right? Well, mm -hmm. same. I mean, you become an adult when you're 18. Period. Yeah. I, we don't, you know, we don't make the underage rules, and right. and you know, we give kids licenses at 18. At 18, you can do all kinds of things that you couldn't at 17. And and yeah, I, I mean. Fortunately, I didn't have to breathe a sigh of relief when my kids turned nine or 18. <laughs> my father told the story that uh, on my 18th birthday, he rolled over to my, my mother and he said, we're off the hook. <laughs> 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 All right, we are, we're talking with uh, Elena Santa Cruz and Robert England. They wrote the story for AZ Central. They've been the driving force in holding these hooligans and officials, by the way, accountable. We are honored to be joined by Robert England and Elena Santa Cruz. They broke the story of the Gilbert Goons to AZ Central. They also put together the puzzle pieces that the police did not, and f I don't think they did until you guys brought it to their attention either, if I uh, recall my timeline correctly. But one of the things that we like to dive into is what's the why, and the, the whole community has been baffled by the fact that you've got parents, uh, affluent parents mostly, who have not said a word, uh, haven't come forward, nobody's... You know, we always think of uh, maybe it's a little bit uh, Mayberry here, but I, I think of my parents grabbing me by the ear and dragging me to the police station to say he's, you know, you tell him what you did sort of thing. And nobody's doing that. And I and I started in the back of my mind thinking, is this Arizona's affluenza, right? Is this a situation where parents are maybe covering for their kids, where they're hiding their kids? But the, the other side of the why here and why not come out is... I feel like they're they're wealthy enough to be able to afford advice, and they're probably smart enough to say 
my kid might be involved or I saw my kid in that video or whatever else it is, I'm going to lawyer up in a heartbeat. Lawyers are terrible when it comes to PR, right? Because don't lawyers just say, shut your mouth, right? We'll deal with this through the legal means, but don't say a word. Well, I don't want to give up a trade secret, but talking to us or anyone else is really a dumb idea if you're a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> but you two did did point out in your piece, one of you talked to a, a parent of a goon. Maybe you've talked to several of them. And, and this mom said something, I'll paraphrase here, something along the lines of like, what do you want me to do? My kid was at a party. Do you expect me to turn him in for going to a party where a kid got beaten? Something like that, roughly what, what that, that mom said? That's, she said that on social media, in fact. Oh, okay. Um, and it was, it was a lot more than that. But, but um, that mom in that, in that post acknowledged that her son was at the party but didn't see what happened and, and then tried to say that her, her son wasn't involved. And, of course, the rub on that is, okay, but what about the videos I can show you with your son in them? And and suddenly there there isn't a conversation anymore. And that that's actually happened to us t- two or three times. And in one in a very um, confrontational phone conversation, the mother the mother was trying to convince me her son didn't have anything to do with the death of Preston Lord. And I said, I believe you. We don't have any evidence showing that. I said, but about those videos with your son in them, mm-hmm. and and her her return or her repost was, we have no guilt. We have no guilt. How many parents of goons have you two spoken with? How many have actually <laughs> done what you just said was uh, perhaps not the best decision and decided to talk with you two? A handful. Okay. And, and all kind of a similar story of, hey, we have no guilt, or, hey, what do you want us to do here? Are, are any saying, like, uh, you know, well, maybe we did do something here. We should have done more. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. They don't want to admit any guilt, right? They don't want to, they want to be careful. Could, I suppose it could be used against them either in criminal court or in civil court if they were to say, listen, we're working with my kid. He was part of that video or something. How You guys watch these videos a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, at what point, like when you first saw it, you must have, as we all did, went, you know, m- mouth agape. After watching that a few times, do you become desensitized? Does it start to wear you out? I, I, I actually felt empathy for you because your job required that you kept watching that in the same way that I, I, you know, officers that track down some of these predators online, they have to watch some pretty horrible things. I felt that for you guys, that you had to keep watching all these horrible videos over and over to try to identify people. Did it start to weigh on you at some point? I mean, I feel a bit desensitized, but I, every single video I've watched, it still is like, oh my gosh, what are they doing and why? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a piece of me that's desensitized and the other piece is like... Jeez, I can't believe what I'm watching. Do you com- com- uh, Robert, you've been at this for a while. Do you compartmentalize your humanity sometimes when it comes to going to work? Or, or do you? does the humanity sneak in there and all of a sudden you find yourself feeling empathetic toward the victims? Or, you know, I found myself thinking of, of the parents of the victims, you know, as a parent myself. I think, I think, my God, I can't imagine what it would be like seeing my child getting beaten up like that. Well, I'm a walking case of PTSD anyway, so... Okay. Um, when you watch them, you, my, my gut reaction is anger because I keep reminding myself that at the, at the back end of all these videos is a dead child. And that's the thing that keeps me going and looking at them and, and pulling it out. Is it fun to watch? No. Oh. And my phone is loaded, chock full of these things. Oh. Um, but, and then it's funny because you mentioned your kids. You know, what do you think? I've had a conversation, my wife and I – what would we do if and i said well we don't our kids wouldn't they didn't they don't they that's not how our kids would respond so thank god they don't but if they did they'd be in a car on the way to the police station right now he said we all in fact i had a conversation with some other people they were they were saying like if my kid would be dragging them by their ear like mayberry style down to the police station but if the situation does arise I mean, you're a smart guy who's got kids, right? So you, you kind of go into almost a protection mode, don't you? Or do you, you think you'd just throw them to the, to the lion's den? Because I feel like I would go, all right, this is going to be bad. Let's lawyer up. Let's do what we can to mitigate this, to smooth the process, to, you know. Yeah. You know, they're, it's hard. There but for the grace of God go I, right? Yeah. But I can say I wouldn't cover up my child's crime. I might get him a lawyer, but yeah. he would also be telling police what his part was at least that's what i believe 
Your piece is titled 17 Gilbert Goons and Parents Sued Over a Tax Conspiracy Alleged. It's up right now over at AZ Central. We're talking with Robert Anglin and Elena Santa Cruz. In your piece, you, you talk with this attorney, Richard Lyons, and uh, like you said, uh, conspiracy is alleged. These parents are being charged with negligence. When it comes to the police, I got the sense that uh, Mr. Lyons may be coming at the police at some point. Did did either of you get that sense that that we could see a negligence charge or something that is targeted at the police? Because he even says there that the police knew about what was going on and, you know, didn't do enough. Or, or there was a, a story you, you two mentioned in particular where it was uh, it, it, what didn't become a cold case, but it was essentially shelved. And then after you two were looking into it, just a matter of uh, weeks later, all of a sudden it's 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 not a cold case anymore. Like, does, doesn't that that say something about the police here? There, there are a lot of questions about the way Gilbert Police handled this these cases, the attacks. Now, I, I've in every interview I try to separate the attack cases from the homicide investigation sure. of Preston Lord. That investigation is being handled by Queen Creek Police, um, its first homicide investigation of the NASA department. But the Gilbert Police have, uh, the, have taken on, or most of the attacks occurred in Gilbert, which would be the aegis of the Gilbert Police Department. And those cases were handled charitably, abysmally. Um, there, there was no... They, they just weren't handled at all. They were shelved. They're, the attacks went unnoticed. And when we, can, I, for want of a better term, confronted or questioned the police department about this originally, the response was, well, we, didn't, we couldn't put them together because we didn't connect these cases because the parents, no, none of the victims said they were attacked by Gilbert Goons. <laughs> well, it stuns me, too. You you hear Michael Michael Solberg. He's the police chief out there in Gilbert. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even use the term Gilbert goons. He calls it teen violence. And and, and Chris and I have talked and wondered, like, hey, wh why doesn't he use the term Gilbert goons when you can connect s some of these cases? It's not just teen violence. It's not, well, we've got 40 teens, 40 different instances of violence. We've got a specific group of teens here tied to several attacks and yet he never uses that term as like to me that would be something that he could say hey we're looking at this and targeting it. it it's as though he wants to just say like oh nothing to see here it's just teen violence it could happen anywhere which is interesting because in like police records and form fours we're seeing of these kids that are or these teens that are being arrested you see a line in there that says this individual is part of a group of uh, teens that have been assaulting kids in the valley, part of here's these list of investigations but he's not going to say it because it's part of their investigation into whether the Gilbert Goons is a criminal street gang mm. but I do think that line is very interesting to read anytime I keep reading these arrest records. So you think that. that's intentional, he doesn't say Gilbert Goons because there may be a, like a legal aspect to that, that he that, that would be naming the mafia for instance, right? That you're naming I, Bloods, Crips, Gilbert Goons. I'm not convinced of that, frankly. I think that they're using the term as a way to create a, and broaden the circle of investigation so they can claim we were looking at teen violence long oh, before yeah. this, this cropped up, so this isn't a Gilbert Goon Well, obviously problem. they weren't, because if they were, they would have been able to connect them. I mean, you this, said it, I'm nodding. Well, okay. Well, listen, I mean, it's 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 kind of like uh, somebody saying, oh, my God, I was just assaulted. And they were like, can you, uh, you know, can you name your rapist? Like, no, I can't. Oh, well, then we don't know if it's related to the other ones. No, that's your job. Right? That's your job. That's it. It's it's very keystone ham-handed to me. In studio, the people you have to thank for making us a little safer by cracking the Gilbert Goon story. Robert Anglin and Elena Santa Cruz from the uh, Arizona Republic are with us in studio. And I was noticing, guys, uh, as we look at teen violence and what's happening, uh, in fact, the, the other issues that may not even be related to the Gilbert Goons, and some cities are starting to say, forget it, it's not going to happen here. Chandler, I saw, uh, has got the, the zero tolerance on teen violence now, they're saying. They're, they're not going to take it. Forget about it. Sam Mack at the, at the your colleague there says that the, the Chandler officials unanimously pledging yesterday to crack down on youth violence and they're investing in preventing it. Do you see this happening with other communities? I feel like at the very least from a PR standpoint, you're going to have other places that are going to come out and say, we're 
Listen, this is not going to happen in Ahwatukee. This is this is not something that's going to happen in Surprise. Peoria stands against this. We have got zero tolerance. I mean, at some point, do we start seeing some other cities that are putting the message out? I'm sure. And this, look, the Gilbert Coons is a phenomenon into and of itself. But teen violence has, has I mean, it's just ripe right now. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. And there was, there was a brass knuckle attack at a at the Desert Ridge In and Out. It sounds very much like a, a Gilbert Goon, but it's uh, it's not connected. It has Why nothing is it all In and Out Burgers? I don't understand what the really. I mean, I, I don't think I, I don't. The think menu's that, not big enough. Well, I don't think I don't think it's a really facetious question. I mean, it, it's not happening at Raising Cane's. It's happening at In and Out. Is there any reason for that? But, I, I can't but think al- of one. It also is happening in in parks, in parking garages. It's happening all okay. over the place. But yeah, that does seem to be it's the restaurant du jour. Well, the restaurant, because it becomes a hangout, and yeah. I think that's it's, oh, okay. a, it's an outgrowth of that. Um, I, I, where I live, we have an in and out, and yeah. every Friday night, it's it, there's hundreds of kids out there in cars. I haven't seen any violence there, but they're there, and certainly, I, I mean... You remember when Geraldo wanted to ban hoodies because he said they were the problem? <laughs> I mean... Maybe we're finding the common thread here. <laughs> you guys wrote in one of your stories, uh, as we talked with Robert England and Elena Santa Cruz from Arizona Republic, you wrote in one of your stories that the goons, one of the hallmarks of the goons is sort of retaliation, like mm-hmm. which feels very mafioso to me. If you say anything, you're going to pay for it. Nobody has said more about this than you guys. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I wonder about behind the scenes. Have you Have you gotten any... Like, I don't know, one ringers in the middle of the night, people hanging up, heavy breathing or anything like that. I mean, have you felt any threats your way? I haven't. No, 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 no emails, no phone calls. You're staying away from In N Out Burger? Is that staying away from the Gilbert In N Out Burger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything, Robert, anything from you? No. Um, but I, but there have been retaliatory mm-hmm. incidents involving the Gilbert Goons. But I think what has, what we're, you have to remember is we're talking about teenagers who live on social media, and many of those retaliatory threats are coming. It's like it's like nothing. I, I look. First of all, you're dealing with a group of people who filmed what they did wrong, right? They filmed themselves committing crimes. So mm-hmm. start with that That's as a baseline. That's there, right? <laughs> yeah. And then they're they're using Snapchat to tell victims shut up or else. So. Um, or we'll, as one famously wrote, we'll do you the way we did Preston, whether or not that's true or not. That was Whoa. the threat that came through. So you see it. But I think it's, a, again, I think that's part of the social media behind this. But there is no remorse then, is there? Like, I, I feel like there ought to be a human side at some point where these guys, what happened with Preston Lord, maybe somebody went, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that happened. This has got to This has got to be it. We can't. But were there attacks after that? I would have thought that would have put an end to it. I, okay, so I thought the same thing. Okay. And I was interviewing victims at the time um, for, for one of our first stories, and I was talking to people about coming forward, and they would tell me, no, we're afraid. These people came to our house already. They've come to our house. They've, they've done things to us. They've chased us, and they've, they've, of course, threatened us on social media. And I said, well, look, there has been a murder. Yeah. It would be inconceivable to me for them to, to continue attacks, to continue retaliation. And not two days later after I told this, this, the parent of this victim that, we found out there was a beating in Santan Valley two week, two and a half, three weeks after Preston Lord was killed. That was related. That, that was, was the same mm-hmm. group of individuals, the Gilbert Goons, carried out a, an attack. Now, and I want to make clear, we believe we've pieced together Information that shows that the the goons are connected to Preston Lord's death. Okay. Um, so you, but so the same overlapping group of people, the same Gilbert goons carried out an assault in in Santan Valley, and Pinal County has now made arrests in that case. Talking with Robert Anglin and Elena Santa Cruz, we're gonna let you guys get out of here. Just one one more quick one to to tie up some loose ends. November sixth, police go out to this community, uh, White Wing, to conduct a search. Do, do we know how many homes were searched in that area? Do we know what exactly they were looking for? Was it computers? Was it phones? Obviously, it's evidence of some sort. But we just continually hear they're out there on November sixth and conducting a search that we know or we presume was tied to Preston Lord's death. It, uh, yeah, everybody we've interviewed is connected that to Preston Lord's death, mm-hmm. and that search was was eye-popping in a way. They brought in armored vehicles. They had um, 
armed officers on streets outside, I mean, armed with automatic weapons in this very affluent Gilbert neighborhood. With the two RV garages, things like that. Hold on, Mogadishu. Is that necessary? (laughs) Was this this a display? Is it because, hey, we're a police force and we never get to get the SWAT truck out? I I can't answer. Or did they think there was going to be a firefight? I think that they were basing it on what they probably suspected on, um, that it was based on particular individuals' criminal backgrounds, perhaps. Oh, really? But they did go into that community um, in force, um, and we off, have photos to show. Yeah, closed off streets, made, wouldn't let people sit in their homes. As to the number of houses that were searched, neighbors have told us repeatedly that it was four. I think there might be a misnomer there. I've learned um, through reporting that houses were searched, whole houses, but then there were other searches of property belonging to people. So there were search warrants executed, but I can't say that four actual houses were searched at this point. Th- appreciate that clarification. Too. Uh, Robert Anglin and Ellen Santa Cruz, thank you so much for coming in today. You can check out their, their latest story, 17 Gilbert Goons and Parents Sued Over Attacks, Conspiracy Alleged, up right now over at uh, Arizona Republic. Great work by both of you. Uh, terrible, terrible story, but phenomenal reporting by both of you. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.